We're efficient here at Lara. Now, Matt, so on, on MasterChef, you give them all a little apron, don't you? Yeah, yeah, we get them. We, we, if they're good enough, they get an apron. Right. Well, and these guys obviously are good enough. You've got some pretty hot cooks here. We've got some very hot chefs here, so we're going to give them an apron. So we thought we'd introduce the chefs and the restaurants to you, and Matt's going to hand out their apron. So I'll call them up in the order that they're going to be cooking. We've got Cody Gibb from Fisherman's yeah. Pier, if he could come out. Cody. Thanks, mate. So, Cody, you're, you're, you're from uh, Fisherman's Pier. Has, has Matt ever been in there and uh, sampled your cooking? Uh, no, no, I no, seen no, I haven't been there. Never been there. But then, then you never do, because I'm like the food ninja. I sneak in, dressed as a 22-year-old blonde girl, and I sneak out again. Oh. <laughs> I, I can see you getting away with that. <laughs> so, uh, the, the next two Cody's going to be cooking with is Lyndon Betts from the View Grand out at Queenscliff. Uh, you got your game face on there, Lyndon, haven't you? <laughs> you know it. Nice shoes, mate. Nice shoes. Uh, now, now, that's very interesting. Are, are these chefs going to wear them around their neck like my mum, or are they going to just do that cool thing of turning them over and wearing them around their waist like Italian chefs? <laughs> you know it. Like yeah, look at that. There we go, straight away. Straight straight in with the, with the cool chefing look. I'll go like that. Yeah, I reckon that's... That's a go. And then, and, then, and then Lyndon is young enough to be able to tie it around the front, something that um, <laughs> at least one of my chef Money mates can't do. Beautiful. Gee, so Cody's got a lot more to cover than me, so... <laughs> you, you, you've been sledging. You've been sledging everybody back on stage, haven't you? Oh, you've got to be good at something. I can't cook, so I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> Lyndon's nervous because I used to be his dishwasher years and years ago. Is that, so where were you Lyndon's dishwasher? Uh, Kelp in Point Lonsdale. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, and, and then you rose to being head chef? Yes. There. Uh, I travelled oh. around and then... And then and yeah, travelled around and went then... Went yeah. the, right. Okay, so this is a bit of a grudge, mate. It's the master versus the apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> who's who's going to win? Well, as I said before, mate, I'm just a working class chef. Mate. I'm just here for. Yeah, you're, 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 you're not one of the VIP, doing. young, high flying, yeah, groovy right. chefs. You heard the sledging, he thinks he's got in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does. Excellent. Um, All right, the next chef, Leone from Jack and Jill, last year's winner. Now, Leone, I heard you on the radio on Bay FM just, just now snatching everyone else off and going, <laughs> they haven't got a chance. And I'm just keeping it simple. I'm just doing rabbit 17 ways. I'm doing the leg. It's just a few number of, you know, obviously the restaurant's about small plates. So I'm going to do a couple of small plates in the two and a half minutes we got to cook. Um, are you quite confident? No. <laughs> um, not at all. Did you get that little uh, envelope I gave you earlier, judges? Or? <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, but sadly, sadly, one of the other guys have been to it before. So there was nothing but potato peelings in there. <laughs> I think the money's sticking out of the Cody's back pocket if you look carefully. <laughs> no, no, is it, um, you won what best casual eatery at the the, the, the the plate awards three um, years in a row? You won for Jack and Jill's. Um, uh, um, from when I was at the Fineford Hotel, right. and we've won a couple of awards with um, Jack and Jill as well. Yeah. Is it actually possible to get a table? anymore because I've, I've heard from everyone here I've, I'm coming down here because the only time you actually see Leone is when she does it outside because it's almost impossible to get a booking now um, you, you're pretty, very popular down here aren't you uh, well, I hope so yeah um, we're pretty busy each night yeah. see, I'm, I'm just showing you this is the other way of sledging there are two ways of sledging one you put people down the other one is you're so nice and they don't really know what to answer <laughs> you, you keep, it, keep it in the spotlight like that Leone welcome thank you all right, and now a name uh, who's, who's probably familiar with most of us here. He's been a big supporter of the Lara Food and Wine Festival, Matt Dempsey. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Matt, 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 <laughs> so big, Matt, is your head so big you can't get over your head? <laughs> you know it. Now I know why Lindy's got his wrapped around. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me about the helicopters, Matt. Well, Lyndon gets one usually from the View Grand, and uh, they drops him off wherever he likes. But, uh, yeah, I drive around in a Hyundai XL, so <laughs> pretty low maintenance for me. No, no, you, you've, you've, had, you've had a crazy, a crazy time the last few years of your career. So, to give us a, give us a bit of background on, on, on what you've achieved. Uh, I guess um, after Pedaval, I went down to the pier on the waterfront, which was a fantastic experience. And then uh, just recently, um, we opened our own restaurant for the first time in Invalie, which is called Gladioli, so very exciting. Now, 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 did you work at Pedaval at the same time as these other guys as well, or were you... you were, had, tell, me, tell me how that timing worked, because you've got what, what, three guys here, all of whom worked at Pedaval. 
Yeah, I was there for probably about seven years all up, so I came, you know, saw lots of people come and go during that period, but it was a fantastic grounding for me, so yeah. I mean, I, we were talking about it uh, backstage, the, the impact that, that a couple of really good restaurants can have on an area, and I think, you know, this flowering we've seen in restaurants around in Geelong and around Geelong, you can put it back to a couple of places, can't you? You can put it back to places like Athelson House and Pedival in terms of training up great young chefs. How important do you think that, that, that having those little mini centres of excellence are? I think it's fantastic. Obviously, the networking within the bigger cities is quite evident, but particularly in regional spots like Geelong, uh, you'll see that, like you mentioned, places like Pettivel become breeding grounds for some of the best managers and chefs uh, in the region for years to come, so it's very important. Because, I mean, I mean, the, the great thing about, about being out in an in a area where you're surrounded by farms is, of course, access to produce, but, but access to good staff is probably... Would that, would that be the biggest challenge you face setting up Gladiola? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It took me quite a while, and um, to find uh, my, my front of house manager, um, it's it's not impossible, but it is really, really difficult. And when you get them, you've got to maintain them and keep them, basically. So sure. you do whatever you can to try and ensure that happens. I mean, it also must be a, it also must help having knowing having that network of chefs because often chefs work in isolation. But in terms of supporting, you know, new new wholesalers, new guys doing specialised things, finding a great sourdough bread maker, supporting them, making sure they stay there. Yeah, absolutely. Same sort of thing. Like, uh, Lyndon will often recommend people to me, or I'll say, I'll go and see Leonie at Jack and Jill. She might be interested in that. Or uh, we've got a, a first or a second year apprentice who wants to move on. You try and continue that sort of um, fantastic support from the other local restaurants as well. Fantastic stuff. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, are, you, are you maybe the target man? You know, no, I think Leonie's the defending champion, so <laughs> she's the target woman. <laughs> So, Matt, I don't know how many um, people George had uh, when he was cooking, but have a look at our, that crowd now. You, uh, I think you've got an audience of, you know, there's probably four or 5,000 people out there. Yeah, yeah. Can, I, can I just I'll make one note? Me and Rosa, about 50 people. These guys on stage, hundreds. Yeah. Now, that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it says something about the quality of chefs down here in, in Lara. Or around Lara. We'll, we'll say that rather than around Geelong, just around Lara. Around Lara, Lara that's it. Center. All right, well, let's get out uh, Daniel now from Black Ball and Tapas. <laughs> Daniel, what's the significance of the black jacket? Are you, the, are you setting yourself up as the, um, the mysterious stranger? The black sheep or the black bull? <laughs> Oh, no, it's just the uniform that we wear in the workplace. We're mm -hmm. just trying to fit in with the theme of the restaurant. Um, it's about seven of us in the kitchen with the black ball and the pinstripe aprons and the black jackets, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, 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 black ball uh, tapas, I mean, so you, you, you're doing good numbers on it. I mean, what, how many people come in and eat on a Saturday night? Uh, we did about 170 last wow. Saturday, uh, 140, I think, on Friday night. Um, they're pretty large numbers, yeah. Mm -hmm. we're, we're moving along really well. Um, how, how does it differ cooking for like uh, with a, a group of a team of seven of you um, and doing those sort of covers to say being here one dish you by yourself is it harder or easier? Oh, this is this isn't too bad. It's um, it's it's good um, good training I guess for these sort of situations because we we usually serve about three and a half dishes per person. So any covers, like 100 covers, can produce 350 dishes out the door. Yeah. So we don't have sections in the kitchen. We have stations, and everyone's got a selected number of dishes that they need to put up at any one time. So, so you're working very much as a team. Oh, we have to. We couldn't yeah. do it any other way. We've tried everything else. So, so now, now, now are you, how confident are you about, about today, about, about taking out this title? Uh, not too confident. There's some pretty um, high-caliber chefs here. I'm just sort of coming along for, to participate and have a bit of fun. Oh, oh that, 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 that's a beautiful bit of, bit of stalking horse talk there. Yeah, yeah no, me, I'm nothing special, it's fine. You know, I've, I've seen Paul Hall hustlers use exactly that same line. I'm just, oh, this cute, it's this old thing. You'd say, no, no, it's fine. And then, then, then they rack them and stack them straight away. Well, good uh, luck. Yeah, thanks very much, Matt. Now, our next chef was going to be from, uh, from Jack Rabbit, but uh, David Hall, unfortunately, at about nine o'clock this morning, called in sick. So uh, I was actually just wandering around talking to all the exhibitors and I saw a guy walking around in a white coat. And I went up to him and said, are you a chef? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a chef. And I said, good, come with me. So please, be, please uh, welcome Peter Little from Lush Desserts. He's filling in at last minute. So a man under great pressure.
Nice, I've got an apron out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Peter, Peter, how much do you know about this? This is a bit like doing a mystery box. You've, you've, you've been dragged off the street. You have no idea what's going to happen. No idea what's going to be thrown. These guys have been training for months. You know, it's... it's, it's it, are, are you... This I'll do it the Australian way. I'll just bring it. <laughs> I've got a, a box out there with a, a, an onion, a potato, and some spring onion. I've been given a rabbit. We've rustled up some rice and a bit of cream and white wine. And that's more or less what other people would have at home in their cupboards. So let's see what we can cook with that. <laughs> I, I, I love it. You, you, are, you are the Clint Eastwood here. You are the Clint Eastwood here. Coming in. You I'm walk in with cannon. a cerute. Not don't say a lot. And just, just let your guns do the just do, let your guns do the talking. That's right. I'll, I'll just be the least cannon, mate, and uh, yeah, the general fool. <laughs> Fantastic, Peter. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to do. It's great. Thank you very much, mate. Excellent. Thank you. Look, lastly, I just might like to welcome Rosa back to the stage, and Rosa's going to be judging. And also welcome to the stage Paula from Bay FM. So, Paula, I'm sure many of you uh, know, and uh, Bay FM are doing the outside broadcast and have been great supporters of the Lara Food and Wine Festival. So, thanks, Paula. Are you looking forward to uh, tasting all uh, the treats that these uh, top chefs are going to dish up? I'm so hungry, I can tell you. So, I'm really looking forward to it. But I've got pet rabbits at home. So, <laughs> you know, it's really going to be hard to win me over with rabbits. So, let's see how we go. It's a good thing I'm hungry. All right, what, what, thanks. What are, what are those rabbits' names? Uh, I actually, well, one of them has passed away, sadly, gone to rabbit heaven. But the other one is called My Little Bunny. That's My all I could come up with. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, go! And they're out of the gates like a couple of tired cats. I'm going to try and Did everybody see Matt's boots? They are special. I think you should model them. Cow skin? Cow hide? <laughs> what is that? Uh, it's called pony skin, but I've been told it isn't really made with ponies. Um, just, uh, it's actually, they're actually, these are R.M. Williams. Good Australian boots. Handmade R.M. Williams. They're fantastic. They, um, it's one of, the great, one of the greatest things you buy in Australia. And when visiting chefs come from the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival, it's one of the things you always make them leave with is a pair of beautiful Australian-made R.M. Williams boots.